down just for a moment here, but I want to show you a few things or get a few things across. Florida International University, right here. Code Administration, FIU is permitting authority. I wanted to leave the link open for you guys here. So FIU, this is on the Tiger Grant. The Tiger Grant's federal grant money for this project. They make it clear that the Code Administration, Code Administration, semicolon, and then N is semicolon, stands, for, stand on, stands on its own. Code Administration, FIU is permitting authority. They've said this in numerous documents. I'll link it and probably the next video. Florida International is also, therefore, the one responsible for condemning if a bridge needs to be condemned. Everything about that location they handle. So if you wanted to do any building there, you come to, not to Miami, not to anywhere else. Florida International is the Code Enforcement Authority. They're the ones that decide whether you're going to get the permit, whether they're going to condemn you. They have the power. They're the ones that applied for the grant that said, we want to build a bridge. They also brag on their website that they wanted to make this their bridge to show all the other engineers during the upcoming events that this is what it's all about. That subject. The overhang. The overhang of this bridge. Here's the support that everyone's getting upset about. Post-tensioning changes the dynamics of the bridge. Post-tensioning cables do that. So we have a problem with everyone saying that this bridge will just be an overhang and fall down. We even have engineers saying that. The stays that will go in here, the 16-inch pipe will come down here and take put more load onto this bridge, this structure right here. 16-inch pipes weighing thousands of pounds more will be on this structure that's not even calculated in this move. It doesn't have to be. They're not present at this time. What am I talking about? I'm talking about these stays here. These are 16 inch pipes. They, they will not be self-supporting. They're not contributing to taking the load off the bridge as they are pipes. They're not cables. They are designed to get rid of harmonic or help with harmonic frequencies, uh, vibrations, so we don't have collapse when people are marching across the bridge together in sync, as we say. That means the load is going to be carried mostly here, and some load will be carried at this point, following down. The load path will be following down the pylon. But most of the load will be taken back onto the bridge as, at all these points. So all of this weight, somewhere about, I would not give this a half, I would give this somewhere about this much of the load being carried back to the pylon, and the rest of these steel weight uh, going back onto the deck. With that said, they're not present when they're moving this bridge. Also, what's not present are two more post-tension cables. So that would also take help take this load. All of this load is going down the center of the bridge. This is where I'll show you in a minute that I have a new bone of contention with this design. We'll get to that in just a moment. And I'll try to wrap this up shortly. The overhang. So these post-tensioning cables, what they do is like a tight rope. If you have a slack rope, you walk on it, it's going to swing all around. If you tighten that rope, you can now put a load on that rope and walk on it. If I can help you understand that. So this post-tensioning, it's not just the concrete that's somehow keeping this bridge from falling downwards. It is, it is the post-tensioning cables being taut. And it's now one solid piece of steel, if you will, it, it's incapable of flexing with these loads. Now, that's specifically with these loads. You can add loads, obviously, to make the cables and any, anything fail. So it's incapable of flexing at this point. We also have it in top canopy, only in two locations, outer locations, uh, not, the, not the furthest one out. This also stops this canopy from flexing. What I find interesting is that a lot of engineers on, are stating that, that the, the structure, maybe the number 11, was strengthened to take the load of the overhang. Well, engineers should know that the, when you're handling an overhang, a cantilever, the load is handled at the top part of the, of the, the uh, subject matter, not at the lower section. It can be handled at the lower section if you use a brace coming off of there and to the bottom, uh, say a wall, and you've seen braces bracing a, an overhang where there's no 
an overhang. You come out to a porch, you look around in the cities, you see a um, metal porches, and you'll see a brace coming back to the wall. They're handling that overhang and transferring the loads back into the wall with the brace. Now they also can handle it at the top wall with the brace from the top, and you'll see that with an anchor coming this way. And then the wall, and then it's carrying the load, they're transferring the loads back down. So you could argue, well, that's what they're doing here, that they're coming back, and the load is transferring down here. That puts a lot of questionable load back to this, this, this node, if you will, this location. Not too questionable. Uh, too many variables going on there. So now we have that the overhang is being supported here. Without this, the overhang would be, this is unsupported from here to here. It's unsupported. There's no supports in here, it's called. Now the support is here. So the, its support is back to this location here. So we divide this in half from this point to this point. Typically how this is done. We divide in half. So half of this load is transferred down this column. This other half is transferred to this section here, which is transferring the load back down here. Oh, wait a minute. And back down this column here into this, back to this point here. That puts the load from this column and partially from this half coming down to this, back down number 11, back to here. Putting the loads back on the entire lower deck, which would be this post-tensioning, which is significant. It's a significant amount of post-tensioning there, which is transferring the load back down to the transporter. So we're going around in a circle, if you will. In other words, I think that this deck is clearly able to take its own loads, uh, take these loads without any problems. It was monitored. I don't see this as being a deflection issue, that this deflected and, and caused a crack. And I, I just don't see it here, not not at this point. What I do see it is, it is another, in my other videos, you can follow that, the post-tensioning cables being wrong. And now I'm going to show you something kind of amazing. Remember I said the loads are going to transfer back down this column here and down here because that's what the load path is. It has By default, it's got to go down these columns. This upper deck has to go down here. I calculate the total upper deck to be 105 to 131 tons roughly. When I say roughly, that's my rough calculations on the total deck, uh, upper canopy. Hmm. All right, so take note again. Remember that we have the transferring of loads here, here, and here. Now let's go to the drawings, and I'll wrap this up. Here's the canopy. This is going to be so weird when you guys see it. 16 foot wide. This At the time of this transport, there's only two cables present, one and two, and one and two on each side of the bridge. Total of four, and, and, and shy, this one and this one. And also they're not the... the, the Per the plans, they're not, and per how I was able to look at the videos, they're not in the proper location, the, the, the bundling, if you will. With that said, remember that it's going down the center of the bridge. Those loads are transferring via the truss setup. Via this truss setup, and it's an I-beam or truss, however you like to refer to it. We like to think of it as truss because it's not, but the I-beam design Okay, is what they're referring to it as in a couple of the drawings. The uh, Florida National University refers to it. Now, there is training school. I don't get how they can train, put transverse uh, longitudinal post-tension cables that's on the length of the bridge. Then there were supposed to be transverse post-tension cables going across this. The loads, if they're coming down the center of the truss, and we have a gap between the trans, the longitudinal post-tension cables. There, is, there are none between here. And I will go to the image, back to the image. There you see them there, you see them on this side, that's the drain pipe. There's none in the center. Then we come back to the drawing again. There's none specked in the center. Yet that's where your loads are going to be. It's going to be right down the center. Now imagine there's no uh, steel going across this, and there's no post-tension cables. Well, there are no post-tension cables I could find in any of the videos. It seems like they changed it to steel. If I wanted to break this bridge apart, I wouldn't go over top of post-tension cable. That would just be fighting myself. I would come out here to try to make it fail because it's real small. 
It's in, in, in size and in, in dimensions. I would come here. I wouldn't want to come here. This is pretty girthy at the end, but that's just the end. And at the span of the bridge, I would want to start working on, once I knew the cable's strengths and sizing, I would work on each one of those cables as I did it. But ultimately, if I wanted to make the whole bridge fold in like a, like a hinge, I would see that, oh, there's no post-tensioning cables trans uh, longitudinal at the center. Oh, I would just apply force right here and make this bridge just fold apart. I'd make the half sections just fail. Oh, and in the canopy, I would do the same. I wouldn't go across here because this is where the loads are strongest uh, over top of these transverse longitudinal post-tension cables. I would say, hmm, let me go across the center here, the furthest point away from the, the uh, structural reinforcement. I would say that would be the center of these two. So I would go right in the center to try to make this whole bridge break in the center. And in the center here, I would also come here and decide this is where I would make this bridge fail. Incidentally, I don't think they should put any bridge plans online. All this terrorist crap going on, putting this stuff online is just stupidity in the max. You, you, you just, I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe in this day and age they still put plans online. This is just ridiculous. So I would make this fail in the center and I would make this fail here. It's just so simple. If you were to, to try to make this fail, obviously the upper deck is not as reinforced as the lower deck. But you could clearly make the center deck fail, folding, folding in in the rest of the deck. This extra load of the upper deck would help this lower deck collapse inward. Well, in the so center of this deck, your, your load in the center would help this deck in failure as this would now create a hinge, a fold there, you would loot the extra load of the upper deck would help fold this in and collapse the entire structure. This is what's wrong with, uh, with this. There's no, no reinforcement in the center here. There's nothing to stop that, that the, load from, the load from just cracking the center of the deck. The other problem I have is, okay, no transverse post-tensioning. This is what was designed. It was supposed to have a set of four going across each location, and that would have given it support. That would really have made it local in any of the damaging damage damaging happen. It really wouldn't transfer as much. It would have localized a lot of it because now we have the post tensioning coming across all of these guys here, coming across as you can visualize. They're coming across. And each one of these posts coming down, and each post coming down would cross the transverse post tensioning. It would now make it local, and this this would have you'd have this section would fail, and not this. They're not there. There's a lot more reinforcement. They changed this to rebar, just steel going across, and steel is not going to be as powerful as that post tensioning sets. These groups that they have of four, you could monitor it. You'll be able to monitor the load specifically at each point because you'll be able, since they're exteriorly post tension, you'll be able to check it. You'll be able to see that are these failing? You've got redundancy. Um, you'll be able to replace them. Uh, rebar, you're not going to be able to replace. You're not going to be able to figure out how to replace it. These are in ducts. Being that they are in, are in ducts, you are able to service them and, you know, maybe albeit difficult, you would be able to service these ducks. That's the end of this video. Again, I'm showing that the part of the failure mechanism is a design right here, allowing no structural redundancy in the center. In fact, removing structural integrity from the center by not putting in post-tension cables down the center, which I, I mean, I just don't get, why would you make a gap there? Range, you wanted your drains to go there, and so you're post-tensioning. Yeah, yeah you, you couldn't go through the center because your drains are literally going through the center of the bridge, and that would interfere with your post-tensioning member here. You could have put the water running off to the sides and used gutters on the outside of the structure. We're talking three inches. The butterfly decking here, meaning it's butterfly coming in. Could you put... A gutter, a shallow gutter at the top that you would service going all the way down. Yeah, that would look ugly, hold stagnant water. 
Was it simply the, the gutter being the failure of this the gutter design? The drainage being why they left out or why the engineers did not put a center post tensioning there? And then why didn't you put it in the center? Why not in the center where all the loads are going to transfer from the canopy? So here are your, uh, your loads. All your loads are going down the center of this bridge, and yet there's no post tensioning going down the center of the bridge. And in this video, it should be noted that the top canopy does not have the drain issue, so I still don't understand why they did not put a center longitudinal post tension cable down the center where the loads are located. Of course, that might be in line with the post tensioning of the diagonals being down the center. But make it two on either side.